I miss dreaming. I miss sleeping. I miss being pain free. I don't even know what that feels like anymore. To not be in pain. To fall asleep at night and wake up in the morning feeling refreshed, rested, energetic, no headache, no migraine, no nausea, no dizziness, no sensory sensitivities, no ringing in my ears. Just feeling good. To go to class that day without wearing sunglasses, taking all the content in, and remembering it all. Alright, enough of this. Think of something else. What's more real? Concussions or whales? Neither. They are both just human constructions. Words with assigned meaning to try to transcend our isolation and build a connection with one another. But really, most of what we experience cannot be expressed. I know the doctors are trying to understand how I feel when they go through the symptom list and ask what my pain levels are on a scale of 0 to 10. But how could those measurements ever express how I feel or what I mean when I say, oh it's a 6 out of 10 pain today. It's a completely arbitrary way of attempting to understand how I feel. To come to think about it, the words concussion and whale do not inherently mean anything. Nothing inherently means anything. We prescribe value to things because we crave meaning. We want to feel like what we are doing is important in relation to something greater than us. We crave meaning to feel like our language, actions, choices, our lives have purpose. The idea that life has any inherent meaning is absurd. How can life have purpose? Everything is just a human construction. Identity is just another human construction. There is no self. Everyone lives in their own constructed realities. To connect the child in these pictures with myself, living and breathing in the present, I must make up a story. Like this was me at the beach with my mom, dressed up as a fairy before Halloween, reading with my older brother, on my birthday at whatever age. I don't know if these stories are factual or fiction. They are simply stories to connect my past self with my present self. But I've changed so much since then become a completely different person multiple times, and I will continue as time goes on. Life is absurd. It's like the myth of Sisyphus, banished to move a boulder up and down a mountain for eternity. That's what we are all doing every day, pushing our boulders for eternity, constantly doing things that have no purpose or meaning time and time again. Perhaps it's like what Albert Camus said, you will never live if you're looking for the meaning of life. And maybe, to endure it, the trick is to create your own meaning in the meaninglessness. Another sleepless night. I wonder if I will ever have a full night's rest. I can hardly see anything. But of course, you don't need glasses, says the doctor. It's a temporary thing, says the doctor. What does the doctor know what I need and what I don't? This is how you should live based on my X amount of research for a Y amount of years for a Z specialty at this prestigious clinic, is what the doctor says. Well, you know what I say to that? This is not how I want to live my life. This is not living. February 26th, 365 days since my injury. One year of my life blurred into what feels like one long day of aching, pulsating, pounding, inescapable pain. Just because I wanted to head a soccer ball and a game of fee for all. And last month, I can't believe I fell on the ice. It didn't even hit my head and still another blackout period. You may not have obtained another concussion, but you need to go back to the dark room rest period for a few weeks. No lights, no noise, no screens, no exercise, no cognitive activity, no sex, no alcohol, no fun. Fucking doctors. They have no idea what to do with me. Sending me to concussion jail until my symptoms improve. Well, guess what? They are not improving, and I'm still stuck in this dark hole. Concussion. An impact of the brain causing a temporary change or disruption in mental and physical functioning can't see a concussion on an MRI. Research is just starting to scratch the surface of understanding the implications of obtaining a concussion and multiple concussions. Now that's fascinating stuff. When is it another concussion and when is it just worsened symptoms? I feel like a research subject more than a patient. This pain has changed me. 
It's changed the way I see my constructed self. It's changed the way I see society. It's changed the way I see life. Sartre said, existence precedes essence. We are born without a human nature. We simply exist. We define ourselves afterwards and continue to redefine ourselves. There is no human nature. We simply are. We are nothing else but what we make of ourselves. I am responsible for what I do and for who I am. I made the choice to head the soccer ball when I was still in recovery from my previous seven concussions, and I knew I should have walked on the main sidewalks instead of the ice-glazed back alley that day. These are my choices, and now I will suffer the consequences. I will possibly have chronic pain for the rest of my life. But in our choices, we are created. We are our choices, and we become them. I am Sisyphus, pushing the boulder of an eternal migraine until I die. I am my own existence, but my existence is nothingness. Nothing structures my being or my world. There is no meaning in my life, no purpose for my life. Nothingness hangs around me like a noose tied around my neck. All I must do is jump, and there it is, the inevitable death. Death hangs over all of us. We will all die, never having lived up to our so-called dreams and proceeding to live in regret, shame, remorse, and dread, until we're finally confronted with death itself. How long can we avoid the truth? It doesn't matter when or how. You cannot escape it. Death will always have its grips on us. So the doctor wants me to take these antidepressants, like they're going to help my pain. So what if I took them all at once? Would that do the trick? Would that cut me off from this meaningless, painful, absurd life? Unlike Sisyphus, I had the choice to escape my eternal migraine. I am not in an objective, rational world. Nothing can explain or rationalize who I am, or what I am doing, or what it means. We all exist in a subjective, irrational universe. We are all continuously constrained in our ways of thinking our ways of living. They say you need X brand to run faster. You need to eat Y because it'll make you lose weight. You cannot do Z because it is wrong, or you must do Z because it is right. The thing is, we are all free to choose, but no matter what the choice is, it does not inherently mean anything. We are the ones that make our choices meaningful, but we are also the ones responsible for the consequences of those choices. So if I choose to swallow these pills, I am the one who suffers the consequences. I am alienated from my loved ones, the university, the healthcare system, from society, from my past self, from my future self. I only exist right here, right now. I may not ever recover from my concussions, but I don't know that. I can only ever exist in this very moment. I may not have a self and life may be meaningless, but if I kill myself, I will lose the only thing I have left. My existence. My consciousness. I may not see myself in this world, but my consciousness has been shaped by the constraints of the world in which I live. I cannot allow my estrangement to push me into further darkness. I must question the constraints and limits of my own consciousness. For instance, why do I think the way I do? Am I the thing or my own thoughts? Do I consider my own subjectivity? defines me as a person? Is it my concussion? Is it my role as a student, as an athlete? Is it my status as a white middle class person? Is it my identity as a woman, girlfriend, sister, daughter, niece, granddaughter? Simone de Beauvoir said, one is not born, but rather becomes a woman. I must remember that myself is a construction. All of my roles, statuses, and identities are all constructions. I am my consciousness, and I have the power to control it. Despite social institutions and constraints, I am free and responsible for myself. Reality is what I make of it. I must care about my subjectivities and choices as they affect those in my life. I am a part of a complex web of social relations. When I make a choice for myself, I am choosing for everyone. If I choose to take my life today, I am not the only one suffering the consequences. Everyone else suffers too. We live in an intersubjective world, and what I do to myself, I do to others. Freedom is consciousness. It is not desires, wants, or motives. I must break free of the constraints of my own subjectivity. I do not accept my doctor's views of who I am and how I live my life. 
I do not accept anyone else's views of how I should structure myself or my life. I have radical human subjectivity. I can create the meaning of my life. I create my morals, values, and beliefs. I am my consciousness, and my consciousness is free. I am aware of who I am and what I am doing. I can make choices for my life, but I must understand the consequences of that. I can live an authentic free life. I have the freedom to choose. I create my own human nature. My concussion does not define me. It's like Descartes said, I think therefore I am. My thoughts are my reality. I construct myself and my own life. My thoughts are who I am. I am more than a set of predetermined reactions. I determine my actions. I exist in the universe of my own reality which I have the freedom to create. Come on.